I have left City Council after 15 years. I represented the 7th Councilmatic District, which is most of North Philadelphia, Eastern North Philadelphia, and the Lower Northeast, um, representing neighborhoods from South Kensington uh, to Frankfurt on, on the Northern side. And I did so because after 15 years in council, 12 as chair of LNI, as I said, chair of education, in the last six and a half years as chair of appropriations, um, I, like many folks, have grown, fr grown frustrated with our inability to get our government to work efficiently and effectively, effectively for all residents, let alone residents in certain zip codes, right? And if, by form of, of my, bi my biography, I grew up in Hunting Park. Um, my first job was in community development, so I did housing development going back to like 1985. So my background is around economic development. I managed a nonprofit. I started a charter school, and I came to council really motivated about what government could do for its people. And there's a lot of great things that does that does happen in government. Um, you'll be hearing from the water department and its TAP program. That is one of the programs that I developed. Um, as a result of looking at the data set in the district that I represented, I had a, a large number of homeowners with tax liability, water li liability, and no path to compliance. And, you know, the, the most affordable home is the one that people are in. And so because of that experience growing up in Hunting Park, um, along with TAP, we also, uh, I also introduced the UPA, which really allows folks to pay their taxes in their water and stay in, in their home. And what I particularly like, and you know, you'll you hear about it, you know, TAP is really about water conservation and letting folks understand that while water is a right, some of us believe this water is a right, we also need to know, understand the utilization of water. Um, and the TAP program, once folks are enrolled, really helps us to support families um, who are in these low income programs. Why am I running for mayor? You're going to hear a lot of conversations over the next eight months about 2023. I'm running for mayor because in 2030, right, because I'm now a grandmother, so I no longer think about just my children, but it, my grandchildren, what kind of city do we want to turn over to them? Philadelphia is prime. I wish everybody felt as energetic as they do this week because of our sports team around Regardless of our challenges, we should all feel like we're all in the same city looking to, to grow our city to 2 million people. To have, we're a half day's drive from almost 75% of the country. We have an excellent international airport. Uh, we have the ability to, to expand our port. So we're an ideal and very affordable city. And I don't need to tell this, this audience that. Yeah, the majority of the affordable housing units in the city of Philadelphia are in the private sector. And if we're going to be able to take care of our most vulnerable communities, we as government need to be better partners with the private sector. You will read, and we, we've uh, circulated a little bit around the work that I've done around housing, the housing trust fund, the creator of the land bank legislation that we've done. But more importantly for me, during the COVID, we had to work with HAFCO, a partner association, and others to ensure that we could keep people in their homes because their lives depend on it. But at the same time, we needed to learn about how do we support landlords, and particularly small landlords. So while I've been always pushed aggressively to support uh, vulnerable families and communities, I also understood that we needed to put money on the table. And Philadelphia did a pretty good job at putting over $400 million on the table for rental assistance. But where do we go from here? How do we create a portfolio that allows us to, to develop mixed income neighborhoods that won't happen by accident? They really happen with uh, aggressive policy around supporting and incentivizing, but also where government supports the private sector um, around compliance, around safety issues, compliance issues, but then we also get out of the way, right? I was chair of LNI, as I mentioned, and when we started to put forth many of the proposals that we thought were important to keep suitable uh, families, suitable uh, rental assistance, uh, a, a suitability rental certificates, and others. What we found is year over year over year, less people were getting licenses. And the debate internally was, that didn't stop being a rental unit. 
It just, we never gave, we're not giving people a pathway to comply with that, right? We have nickel and dime every single thing, your renter license, your rental suitability license, your lead license, all of these things. We gotta streamline that. We are now in the 21st century, and it's not that anybody in this room doesn't wanna comply. For the most part, you you are the good guys, right? You just you know have, have built your assets um, uh, to build wealth within your family, <clears throat> and we have to be better partners in it. And that's one of the reasons why I'm running. I believe that we can do that. We can help grow Again, the, the affordable market in a way um, that is hugely important. And how do we get there? <clears throat> I don't know. Everybody's terrified about rent control. Harvey said, please talk about rent control. Um, <clears throat> here's one of the things I've learned. I come from a CDC background, and our community development corporations, when all of them are working aggressively, cannot scale up to the number of affordable units we need in the city. And so how do we create product lines that allow small landlords to partner with the city of Philadelphia um, to create those units. I believe the city of Philadelphia needs its own, what I call shallow rent subsidy program. Um, and I'll give you an example of this. Uh, we did this as a pilot pre-COVID um, and we never introduced it into the private sector because after COVID everything uh, went crazy. But we set aside $6 million from the Housing Trust Fund and we worked with our community development corporations and we said, if you give me a unit at 80% AMI, which is about $45,000, $50,000 income for a single person, so about $65,000, um, but we have a family that's 40% AMI, which may be $30,000, who makes up the difference, right? So that we can keep that, that unit in the affordable mount, uh, market. I call it fixed rate housing. I will run and talk a lot about this because I think that is where we have to move if we want to ensure that people can have housing stability, even when they live on the lowest of the fixed incomes, because it doesn't make sense for us to have folks who are homeless or in other product buckets or departments in the city of Philadelphia, because uh, we pay for it one way or the other. So I'm a big proponent of, if we want to take care of our seniors and we want to take care of folks, uh, mostly you know chronically disabled uh, population and others, we have to come up with our own fixed shallow rent program to allow us to get to a fixed rate. For me, that is fair. It is more transparent than any of the other product lines that we've seen historically across the country. All of us know someone in New York who is in a rent control uh, situation that what it has done, in, particularly in New York, and you'll hear folks run and talk about the income rate in, in New York City has increased. The income, medium income in New York has increased because we push poor people out of New York City. It's not because it's more affordable, it's because no one can afford to live in, in, in New York. And we have a unique opportunity here in the city of Philadelphia, um, similar to, to Boston and, and, and other cities, to create a different pathway because we're a row home city. We have an opportunity to create density. Uh, I'm the author of the mixed income housing bonus and other things. We can create the right balance between density, row home to keep the uniqueness of our neighborhoods and create affordability um, also in all neighborhoods. So that's why I'm running. People are gonna run, we're gonna come and they're gonna tell you, I wanna be mayor, I wanna fix stuff. I wanna go in these departments and think of when I was growing up, you know, when, my, when I lived in public housing, um, you know, I wanna fix it for my family and, and, and the families that I know where, where I grew up in Hunting Park, who really um, want us to help, not with a handout, but a hands up so that they can live, again, in the most um, vulnerable situations uh, in, in any neighborhood in the city of Philadelphia. And lastly, I wanna talk about public safety because I know at the end of the day, if people don't feel safe, there's no way we keep them in the city. I was on the police oversight board under the Nutter administration where the federal government came in, the Justice Department, and they wrote a report. It was a scathing report. It talked about our police department. It talked about reforms. It talked about technology. It talked about forensics. It talked about smart policing. <clears throat> that report was issued. A police oversight board was established. I worked for three years along with Ramsey and others, spent a lot of time in the training facility. 
And I know we can have the best police department that serves, that goes back to the service of, of, of the community uh, here in the city of Philadelphia. Because ultimately, we're not going to be safe if our communities don't have trust in our police department. And then lastly, public safety is about poverty. A third of the population in the city of Philadelphia is in poverty. It's in deep poverty. And if folks feel hopeless, you're going to continue to see the violence that you see out in the street. And how do we fix that? The next shooter and the next victim has already been in our system. They've been in our juvenile justice system. They've dropped out of high school. So we literally know the next victim and shooter. And what we haven't been able to do is when those folks come within our systems, how do we wrap ourselves around them to, to um, break that, that intergenerational trauma and violence that they experience? We can do this. This is not a money issue. This is a political will issue around looking at people and saying, how do we give people a second chance? How do we take these young people, 17, 15, 16 years old, shooting each other? Because if they don't see a different pathway, we're not going to curtail uh, the violence. And, all, and then lastly, it's an accountability. The criminal justice system is the courts, right? It's, it's the prisons, it's our, it's our public defender, it's our DA's office, and obviously it's our police department. The mayor is the only person that can really rally all of those departments together and create the public transparency so we don't see the finger pointing that you see today, where there isn't an agreement between the police, the DA, and others. As mayor, and, and again, we have the template in the, in the police report that was issued by the, by the federal government. We have the template, but we need the political will to fix this. I represented a district that had many challenges in public safety, and I already lived in my district the first time Council District 7 is going to have three council people. Nevertheless, um, I learned when I worked with these police captains that there were a lot of good people stuck in bad systems. Police officers who got up every day, and I had captains that would go to a meeting with me, whether it was two people or 200 people, and, and I know, I know that the majority of the police officers who want to do this work do it and sacrifice. But we have to change the narrative, we have to change the perspective, and that only happens through actions, not through words. People need to be, feel valued. Neighborhoods need to be, feel valued. And then there's this investment that's non-police related in neighborhoods that we have to do. Light, lighting. We don't even have a camera program in the city of Philadelphia. We don't have a public camera program in the city of Philadelphia. We have four departments, all with camera programs. I came from London in, in June, I was celebrating my 25th anniversary, and I went to London, and one of the reasons I picked London was because I wanted to see their CCTV program. You can't even get in a cab in London without being uh, recorded. We can get there. We can do LED lighting that creates the safety that we see within our Eds and Meds. If you go to Temple's campus, Penn's campus, it's lit up like a Christmas tree. That creates safety. So there's many things that we can do that are non-police related to increase the safety in, in our neighborhoods. And then lastly, this is about political will and leadership, right? You kind of want to do this job. I woke up every single day in a district where I planned my day, and I'm very efficient in my day, and then stuff happened. And you got to pivot, right? you got to pivot, but for the most part, if you have a plan and a vision, you have departments that are aligned with that plan and provision. I believe the water department, the streets department, are key departments in improving the quality of life for folks. They need to see themselves as the solution to poverty. They need to see themselves as part of the solution for public safety. And right now, because we like that leadership and that cohesion, you have, again, a lot of great people stuck in departments that cannot work effectively. Um, and we need to incentivize those workers to, be, to create those kinds of efficiencies that will get to ultimately better customer service. I believe in the workers in the city of Philadelphia. I believe in the residents in the city of Philadelphia. And I believe we need to see ourselves as one. The same way this week we're going to be at the all sports, all Philadelphia sports, we need to feel that every single day. And whether we agree on 100% of the things or we don't, 
We need to have leadership that evaluates, that is transparent, but also makes a decision and moves the city forward. And I believe that we can do that. And that is why I left my job in the city council uh, to run for mayor. And I am proud of, of being someone who grew up in, in Philadelphia, who graduated from city schools, first one in my family to go, to go to college, um, and, and serve the community over the last 15 years that I did. So I'm excited about this. I left my job to raise the money necessary to get to that place. More importantly, I left my job because I love Philadelphia and I'm not going anywhere. 